I'll wait for people to start uh, joining in, and then I'll post the attendance assignment there. So... Okay. Um, so we'll just wait for people to start joining. Um, and until then, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we forgot to make my attendance assignment for today, so let me do that real quick. Attendance for. Okay. So let me send that real quick. Send the link there. Okay. So I've posted the attendance in the chat. Um, we'll wait a few more minutes for people to start slowly joining. And then we'll start. Just like uh, waiting a few more minutes, getting everything set up. Actually, now the we're waiting. Let me let me open up and whoops, nope, and a condo navigator. There we go. Shuber notebook. There we go. Projects. Meeting. No folder. Okay. Let's call this meeting fifteen. Okay, so um I'm assuming most uh, people have joined now, so just remember, yeah, fill out the attendance. I'll post it again just in case, but um, now we can start. Uh, so, uh, welcome to our 15th lesson where we're going to be covering SVMs today, or support vector machines. Um, so, the first stop, okay, so first I'm going to go through a little presentation, sort of. It's just a bunch of pictures, and uh, these show off. Um, how SVMs really work. If you want like the full article about this, I got this, I got these from Towards Data Science. Uh, so there we go. Um, well, so SVMs are, is a linear model used for classification. So it's a supervised learning algorithm, learning out machine learning algorithm that we use to uh, classify things. So we already worked with logistic regression and this is just an iteration Upon that so here we've got like a simple example data set obviously data sets will normally have more points than this or more values or and such but this is just an example data set that we're gonna be using and um, you know normally see with for these types of data sets you would just like say you wanted to separate between red and blue you would just draw a line like right over here I uh, can't really draw here but that doesn't really matter that's not my point but um, that that seems uh, pretty logical, right? You, you just draw a line, and then anything on this side is red, anything on this side is blue. But let's see here. There's, um, as you can see, there's a bunch of lines you can potentially draw. Like, 
all of these lines would be valid. You can do some weird ones, like you can go here and then over there. And that would still be a valid line because it separates the blue and the red almost perfectly. Or in this case, perfectly, but for most other cases, it's almost perfectly. Um, so um, if you would want to figure out how to make this line, uh, how to split this data in the best way possible, what you can do is um, what they call an optimal hyperplane, where, um, yeah, so we, as you can see, we have the, uh, well, yeah, so we have the points that are closest to the line. We have the lines that are closest to the points from both classes. So these are the, this line over here, these two green lines, they're the closest as possibly can be to the red and the blue classes. And then this is the maximized margin, as you can see. The support vectors in the name SVM, or support vector machines, are these uh data points that lie on that are on the lines the what do you call them the, the these green lines I forgot the specific name but yeah um so yeah so mm -hmm. now the svm is able to make a decision boundary where separation between two classes is as wide as possible see and that seems simple enough you know sort of but then you go here and remember this is a linear model so how would you how would you do this this is definitely different so um what you would do is you would convert this so each of these is made up of an x and a y point right and notice how we're all doing this in uh, two dimensions obviously we can have more uh, parameters more uh, not so not parameters more columns yeah, I think the word is parameters, but it can have more dimensions, and we just we don't need to be looking at two, just two dimensions, just an x and a y. We can have a z, we can have a whatever comes after that. But yeah, so we can look at all the x and y values for these points, and then we can just uh, that we could use this to find the distance from the origin. So we can say z is equal to uh, z being just another, just replacement for the y value. Z is equal to x squared plus y squared because, uh, yeah, that's just the squared value. Or that, that's just the distance squared. So we do that and we get these for our values, and which makes sense because if we go back, these blue points are much closer to the origin than these red points. Though um, these red point in a circular type fashion. So yeah, we would have this and then we'd have our line in terms of x and z. So that's, yeah, we've turned into a linear linear data that's able to be separated linearly, but how would we be able to implement this into our original graph? So, um, yeah, let's, so let's say this. So now we can say that this line z, this is just the constant, or k, then we can say k is equal to x squared plus y squared, right? We already defined k and z as x squared plus y squared. So that's the formula of the circle. So if you wanted to convert that back to the normal graph, it would be in terms of a circle. And at that point, that's the k value right there. So that's just the basic, basic, basic overview of how uh, support vector machines work. If you want um, a more detailed overview of that, then like I said before, you can check out uh, you can check out towardsdatascience.com. I I'll post the link in the chat if anybody is willing to look at that. But yeah, this is a nice article. I'm just paraphrasing what they said over there, but yeah, it goes into a lot of detail on how these support vector machines work. And it's gonna go also go into how to implement them, but we're gonna be covering them here, so no need there. <laughs> um, well, actually, the first thing we need to do, uh, yeah. So first, I'm gonna bring this data set. Yeah, my hard drive's a bit full at the moment, but yeah. Uh, okay, so let me put this data set here. So we could call this data. 
And this is the data set that I got from Kaggle.com. I don't want to re-download it, so I just copy pasted it from the downloads folder. But yeah, um, we will call this meeting or practice. So the first step with working in working with the uh, we call them SVMs is obviously to import all your data. So import NumPy as MP, import pandas as PD, import. Ugh. Oops, import seaborn as sns import matplotlib dot pyplot oh there we go as plt import sklearn dot model model selection oh no 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 whoops that's my bad from sklearn dot model selection import train test split because we will be still using train test split here so sklearn.metrics dot metrics import classification report and then yeah from sklearn dot svm import svc so hmm Okay, well, anyway, um, so you might not be familiar with those last three or last two, or no, just the last import yet, but um, yeah, we'll cover what we'll be using each import for later on. So let's just uh, let's just go through with our example. So um, we named our data set data.csv, so we can call in df is equal to pd dot read csv and then data.csv yeah you could just double click tab on pretty much anything and then it'll show you how to autofill so that's nice but um now we've imported our data frame or data set into a data frame let's see what we're working with here so um as you can see this is pretty standard classification data set where we're working with uh, tumors and whether they're malignant or benign so you're only seeing the M but there's also a B for benign and uh, in basic terms malignant means uh, bad harmful tumor and then benign means not good but tumor that isn't as harmful obviously I don't know much about medical stuff but <laughs> we're we're trying to um we're gonna try to predict this is our uh, y value so we have all all these other columns as our features and we're gonna use those to predict whether it's gonna be malignant or benign so um let's, let's look at a data different dot info whoops there we go so as you can see we don't have any non-null values or n sorry not non-null all of them are non null, but we don't have any null values except for in the unnamed 32 column. So um, we can just drop that easily. So we can call it uh, unnamed 32. And then we have to, this is important, you have to put x is equal to 1. And oh, no, 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 no. And then that's an important thing to remember. You have to. Uh, Actually, yeah, yeah. Let's let's let, let me show you what would happen if I didn't do that. So, we already did this, and now let's say we said df dot drop a name, and we look here, and then apparently we dropped it, right? But let's look at df again, and the unnamed column is still here because this does not. Ooh, I forgot the term. But this does not change df itself. This outputs a new data frame with the changes but it's not saving that so we could save that new data frame as the new df or as as the old df and we could change the old df to be this new data da ugh, df well, anyway so now the now you can see that it's gone for the actual df so now we have that gone um Let's see, we probably won't need ID because, yeah, we can also remove that one. So df.drop ID. Okay, id, id, ax, 
axis. Ooh, this is equal to one. Oh my goodness, I did the same thing again. <laughs> so yeah, and then now we have DF, and these are all the columns that we want to work with. These are all the, you know, the the features. There we go. Yeah. So um, now we can we can look at a quickly. Let me see. So let me check for uh, question. Let me see if anybody has any questions about this. All right, no. Um, yeah, well, um, we can use uh, Seaborn, what you call it? Mm, which one was the Seaborn thing the, where you can see all the data? Let me see. Oh, well, never mind. Well, yeah, so was it pair plot? Pair plot. Let me see. Okay, wait. Uh, DF? Is it? Hmm. Yeah, I think this might be it. Give it a second. <laughs> All right, so while we're waiting on that, because that's gonna take a long time, it's going to, in hindsight, that probably wasn't a good idea, but um, it's gonna take all nine, it's gonna be a 30 by 30 pair plot of all the values compared with each other, so I, you could probably imagine why that would take a long time, my God. So, Give it a second. <laughs> All right, well, we can continue on while that's doing, that's working. Oh no, we can't. Shoot. You know what? Let's just uh, restart the kernel. Let's cut this out. We don't need the pair plot right now. That was just for an example, but we're not going to need it for this specific lesson, so let's just get rid of that. And um, let's just go on to the normal, what you call it, y. So y is equal to df diagnos. Diag oh, whoops. So, well, the y column wants, we want it to be what we're solving for. So we want to solve for the diagnosis. Diagnosis. I spelled that right, right? Yes. Okay. And we want the x column to be df dot. Okay. Well, um, we do want the x column to be everything that isn't diagnosis. Ah, oh my God, I can't talk. Diagnosis. But there's a lot of columns to list out. And it would just be easier to make a copy of df and then just drop diagnosis. So there we go. That's a, that's efficiency for you. Yeah. <laughs> so x train x test. Now we can split all these. Y train y test is equal to train test split. There we go. X y test size. Yeah. So um. You can see that I always do these specific values, and for like, let's look at let's take a look at uh, train test split for a quick second here. So um, yeah, so test size. All right, um, yeah, we um, so test size is supposed to be how much of our uh, data set we should dedicate to testing and training etc and 0 0.3 is a good uh, good 0 0.3 means that 30 percent of our data will be only used for testing it so when so 30 percent of our data will be in the X test and X Y test uh, data frames but so that's a pretty good uh, pretty good size you don't want it to be too large because that means you're not sufficiently training your data but you don't want it to be too small where it could be subject to 
certain exceptions that or certain inaccuracies that come with the smaller data set and um, yeah and also random state you don't really need this honestly but I guess you know nice to have to randomize which data you get so yeah um, so we have that now we can make our model model is SVC Oh, and uh, this SVC is what we imported here. So, models equal to SVC, model.fit. So, we're going to fit the model to X train and Y train. There we go. And then, prediction is equal to model.predict. And then we could say X test. That's not how you spell X test. And now we've got our prediction values. Here you go. And let's see. We also imported a classification report, sklearn.metrics classification report. And uh, let's do that. So print. Classification report. Oh man, whoops. That's my bad. Wrong hotkey. Why? Why test and then prediction. There we go. Beautiful. So this worked out surprisingly well, but <laughs> usually, yeah, so a 0.91 F1 score is pretty good. For, uh, and yeah so like we said before um, precision and recall are different measures of uh, how well your data how well your model was able to predict the values you're looking for and F1 score is a combination of those two values so it takes both of these into account so yeah um, it's pretty pretty good then um, yeah, uh, so, um, yeah, we, that's pretty much all there is to SVM. This is a pretty short lesson, but like we went over before, you know, um, all this is doing is creating a, you know, a linear bound for our model to figure out where uh, or you know whether it's one type or the other and yeah like it's shown here and it's pushed and it's you know the optimal hyperplane where this is the closest it can be to each uh, cluster I guess you could say whereas the blue cluster and as close as it can be so um I guess you could let me see cluster map I think um let me use X test oh no Oh, that one's wrong. Uh, no. Ah, okay. Well, never mind. Yeah. So, um, uh, this was a shorter lesson today, but um, yeah, we covered how SVMs work in this a slideshow here, very uh, high level overview. You know. So, yeah, I hope you hope you were able to learn something here and. While SVMs aren't really useful, I mean, they are useful, but they aren't really commonly used, much like logistic and linear regression. They're useful algorithms to start with, but there are obviously more efficient ways to classify or regress. Regress, is that a thing? Or do that to data. <laughs> so this is a good uh, starting point for machine learning. And um, yeah, this is an important pretty important to learn 
and yeah I guess we covered most of SVMs that was a uh, pretty quick all right um yeah, thank you for coming to the lesson and uh have a good break I guess